yesterday, December 7th, 1941. I was looking at some old family slides when a friend of mine made me stop and go back to one slide in particular. It was 1979. I was two and a half years old and my two older brothers were standing next to me. When you look past the happy family portrait, you could see that all three of us had plastic guns strapped to each of our tiny waists. For us, war was as American as baseball and apple pie. I came to this epiphany in elementary school when I compared my family vacation stories with those of my classmates. They went swimming with the dolphins and brought back seashells. I went to Valley Forge and brought back paper dolls of emaciated soldiers. War captivated my family. It was about heroism, standing up for what you believe. It was something epic, something that deserved a monorail in a gift shop. Whenever we had some extra cash, we'd invest it into some sort of battle paraphernalia. I even owned a teddy bear that had a headband and a sash of bullets. Not only did I think this was normal, I also thought it was cute. As time passed, our pretend wars escalated. Weapons became more detailed, costumes more intricate, character development more involved. The only thing we didn't have was a tangible enemy, a bad guy we could chase. So we declared war on the neighborhood rapids. At first we just chased them everywhere, through the neighborhood and across the fields, but quickly realized we needed a battle plan. So we began crafting these cardboard rabbit traps, you know, the kind you see on Saturday morning kids cartoons. When that didn't work, we called a meeting in the garage and decided that if we were to forge a victory, we would have to take it to the next level and create the perfect weapon. Three days later, we dropped our helmets, patches, guns, and emerged with spears. The war was back on. We began yelling and shrieking, storming through the shrubbery and launching these wooden javelins into the air. And then, it happened. One of the spears fell from the sky and hit a rabbit squarely between its neck and shoulders. We couldn't have hoped or planned for a better attack. It was the moment we were waiting for, planning for. But instead of a victory dance, all three of us just froze. The rabbit wasn't moving. We inched closer, hoping it was just feigning an injury, but still, no movement. We were horrified. Somehow our game had transformed from Defenders of Justice into the suburban version of Lord of the Flies. We stood by the rabbit for quite a long time, and when we finally turned around and walked back home, we put away our weapons for good. I think for us, war had always been pretty black and white. It had always been the good guys versus the bad guys. And of course, we always played the part of the good guy. And it never really occurred to us that just because we called ourselves the good guys meant we were the good guys. The war could be a little more complicated. For more information about the WGBH Lab, log on to our website at lab.wgbh.org.